and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, you will learn about measles. The topics covered in this video are the problem statement of measles, the epidemiology of measles, in which we have the agent, host, and environment factors, clinical features, complications, treatment of measles, and prevention of measles, in which we learn about the most important measles vaccine and the control of measles. So let's dive right into it. So what is measles? So it is a highly acute uh, infectious disease of the childhood. Okay, what causes measles? Uh, measles virus, right? It belongs to the group of myxovirus. Okay, so measles, uh, the virus, it family is paramyxovirus and it belongs to genus that is morbilliform virus. All right. Now, so, mm, it is a common illness in many developing countries. It is there in developed countries also. All right. Now, but it is more common in developing countries. So the primary reasons for continuing a uh, high childhood measles mortality and morbidity is uh, the reason is that uh, there is a failure to deliver at least one dose of the measles vaccine to all infants. So measles vaccine is very uh, it is protective, and so at least the failure to develop uh, to Deliver this is the uh, main reason for continuing uh, mortality and morbidity in children. Now, let us look at the challenges of measles elimination. So, the challenges of measles elimination includes weak immunization systems, highly infectious nature of the measles. So, in a measles uh, virus, it is highly infectious. Okay, weak immunization system is weak. Um, the weak immunization system. Uh, population certain populations are inaccessible due to conflict and the increasing refusal of immunization by some population okay and now um, some people they refuse to take immunization due to their uh, religious beliefs some cultural social um, uh, you know uh, certain uh, groups of people they are just um, they refuse to take immunization so and due to that and due to the changing epidemiology of measles which has led to increased transmission among the adolescents and adults the gaps in human and financial resources at the country le country level also contributes to uh, ch uh, as a challenge it is a challenge in the country level the regional level and global level so these are the challenges that we face to eliminate measles right so the epidemiological determinants so in epidemiological determinants we will learn about the agent factors the host factors right the host factors and the environmental factors now rna paramyxovirus as i said before and this is a single-stranded RNA virus, right? Now, the source of infection, it is a case of measles. Carriers are not common, not known. And there is uh, no or very rare subclinical cases. So, there is no iceberg phenomenon. So, what is the iceberg phenomenon? I think you already know that the tip of the iceberg represents the clinical cases. And the uh, remaining portion is the subclinical cases. And so, uh, this is the clinical case, all right? So, uh, this is the clinical case, this is the subclinical case, so this is the inapparent cases, this is the iceberg phenomenon. But measles is not one disease uh, that uh, has this iceberg phenomenon, alright? So, next is the infective material. So, the infective material is the secretions of the nose, throat and a respiratory tract. So, that is the infective material. Communicability, that is... Uh, declines rapidly after the rash appears so let us say this is the rash okay so before four days before the appearance four days after the appearance so the period of communicability is from four days before the appearance and to four days after the appearance of rash that is a period of communicability now second attack rate as i said in the previous video second attack rate is are not common here also so it, uh, there is lifelong immunity once um, the once the person acquires the disease because there is only one antigenic type of measles virus so second attack rate is not there now age that is a uh, in the host factors we age so virtually everyone in infancy and childhood that is the age which is affected and we have to 
um, we have to just look at the immunity status of the susceptible population so we have to uh, do some kind of serological checking so uh, if there is vaccine is given so because of the administration of vaccines nowadays it is seen in older age groups but otherwise it is six months to three years in developing countries all right because the environmental conditions are poor and so on uh, so sex is uh, e incidence is equal with no gender pr uh, predilection immunity there is no uh, uh, there is uh, no age is immune if there was no previous immunity that is one if there is one attack of measles then there is lifelong immunity now nutrition uh, and also immunity by vaccination is solid and long lasting now nutrition this is uh, uh, measles is severe in malnourished children that is uh, in children uh, that are malnourished uh, due to it can be due to poor cell mediated immunity right that is secondary to malnutrition uh, um, and also in uh, malnourished children they excrete the virus for longer periods than the better nourished children so there is prolonged risk all right now even in a healthy child a attack of severe measles may be followed by weight loss precipitating the child into malnutrition so these are the host factors Next is the environmental factor. So there is no uh, such variations except that in India it occurs in January to April. Now transmission, it is by droplet infection and indirect transmission by droplet nuclei. Droplet nuclei is nothing but airborne transmission. The diseases which are transmitted were already discussed. That is uh, to give a recall, it is influenza, measles, COVID-19, etc. Now, the portal of entry is respiratory tract but it can also uh, infection through conjunctiva is also considered likely now as the virus instilled into the conjunctiva can cause infection now incubation period that is uh, okay incubation what is incubation period incubation period is from the uh, onset of the infection that is from the entry of the infection into the body to the onset of signs and symptoms that is incubation period so it is commonly uh, fever incubation period is 10 days and for rash it is 14 days for the appearance of rash it is 14 days and if it is artificially induced bypassing the respiratory tract that is by uh, as with injection of live measles vaccine the, um, the measles vaccine can produce measles like illness in that case the incubation period is uh, seven days now what are the clinical features so the clinical features are it is in three stages that is the prodromal stage the eruptive phase and the post measles stage so this lasts for around two to three days all right and it begins 10 days after the infection and lasts until day 40 so it is three to five days okay and it is characterized by fever there is coryza there is sneezing there is nasal discharge there is cough redness of the eye and so on there may be also associated diarrhea all right and what we see here is uh, uh, is the coplic spot so that this is a small whitish spot okay where do we see this this is on the buccal mucosa and it is opposite to the first and second lower molars all right and this is pathognomic of measles now the second is the eruptive phase so this phase is characterized by a macular papilla rash all right so this rash where does it begin okay it begins behind the ears post auricular region all right so now what happens is that this rash after uh, that it will spread down it will spread over the face and neck okay in a few hours and then in two to three days it will progress to the lower extre extremities all right now the viral shedding it is more in the first two to five days of the rash and in the prodromal phase that is in uh, three to five days all right now why is the macular papilla rash appearing this is because uh, there is a reaction between the t cells and the virus infected cells in the blood vessels in the small blood vessels so that uh, if the person does not have a good cell mediated immunity there will be no rash so as the macular papilla rash appears there will be circulating antibodies in the blood and viremia will disappear and the fever will fall now the diagnosis of measles is a clinic uh, you can clinically diagnose is when you see the complex spots and the typical rash all right now the diagnosis can also be done using you know ELISA RT-PCR and uh, you know you can do it in throat swabs oral fluid nas nasopharyngeal mucus or urine
Now, the post measles stage. Now, in this stage, the child has lost a lot of weight and the child remains weak for a number of days. All right, so the, uh, there is weakness and there is loss of weight. Now, this there may be failure to recover and the, there be, will be gradual deterioration to chronic illness due to increased susceptibility to other infections, right? Now, there can be also growth retardation and diarrhea. Diarrhea is the most common associated uh, associated uh, condition that comes with measles. All right. Complications of measles. So the complications, the most common one, that is otitis media, right? And uh, there are other complications like pneumonia, associated diarrhea can occur. And pneumonia is like the most fatal and severe complication, that is pneumonia. Otitis media, as you can see, 79% of the cases. But pneumonia is the most fatal of the complications. Other complications such as subacute sclerosing, pan encephalitis, this is rare. All right, and also encephal encephalitis. All these are rare complications. All right. Now, if the, if the person is pregnant, if the woman is pregnant, and then there there is no congenital abnormalities. However, there can be associated spontaneous abortion or premature delivery. All right. Now, what is the treatment? So there is no specific treatment. Supportive treatment can be given. Nutritional support should be given because there, there is risk of malnutrition due to diarrhea and uh, vomiting and poor appetite, which is associated with measles. Breastfeeding should be encouraged and or ORS should be given. Now, patient isolation is important. Um, yeah, and then uh, one important thing which we need to keep in mind is vitamin A. So, vitamin A has to be supplemented uh, in severe all cases of severe measles, right? And all cases of measles in areas with high case fatality rates. So, vitamin A. Um, should be given um, because uh, vitamin A deficiency can lead to blindness from corneal scarring it can lead to keratomalacia all right so eight specific doses are there and you have to remember that so that is 50,000 international units 100,000 into 100,000 so 50,000 is for less than six months 100,000 is from six months to one year and greater than one year that is uh, 200,000 international units so if the child has clinical signs of vitamin A deficiency which we know b12 support we, uh, a third dose should also be given that is uh, four to six weeks later so that is how we give vitamin A right so a uh, high dose of vitamin A is given immediately on diagnosis and repeated the next day and yeah so and these are the doses prevention of measles so measles vaccine is a live attenuated vaccine all right so we give this vaccine subcutaneously it can also be given intramuscularly so the dose is 0.5 ml so 0.5 ml of this vaccine now this strain is known as edmonston zagreb strain or a strain all right now this vaccine is heat and light sensitive so it loses like it's all its potency at after one hour at 37 degrees Celsius. all right and it is sensitive to sunlight hence we keep it in colored glass vials now after reconstitution we have to um, store the vaccine in the dark at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius so uh, reconstitution so talking about that the vaccine is in freeze dried product all right so we have to use a diluent and a sterile diluent okay so after reconstituting the vaccine must be stored in the dark at 2 to 8 degrees celsius that is the ideal temperature it is uh, uh, and it is used within four hours now this vaccine can be monovalent or it can be uh, that is um, or it can be in combination all right it can be mr mmr or mmrv all right next what we have to see is the uh, when it is when is it given so it is given the first at, at, at nine months and then at 16 to 24 months it is given all right now we have to uh, there is this dose that is mcv0 which we give before the regular doses of mcv1 and mcv2 so when is mcv0 given so that mcv0 can be given before nine months all right so this is a supplementary dose all right it is a supplementary dose and it is given during a measles outbreak as a part of intensified service delivery all right so there is an outbreak then we give it then or during campaigns and settings where the risk 
of measles among infants less than 9 months is high so in endemic areas in camp during campaigns we can give okay of internally displaced populations refugees in populations in conflict zones all right so these are the uh, cases in which we can give mcv0 that is a supplementary dose in addition to mcv1 and mcv2 what is mcv again measles containing vaccine all right so this is the this is the indication for giving a supplementary dose what is the contraindication to vaccination so contraindication is uh, if a person has uh, is a recipient of antibody containing blood products all right or the person is in severely immunocompromised state then all of that is a contraindication for receiving the measles vaccine okay and then if the person is a uh, woman is pregnant the women should not be receiving measles vaccine all right next is uh, if there is any severe acute illness if there is any severe acute illness the uh, it is a contraindication for giving measles vaccine all right severe acute illness the uh, person should not be vaccinated okay so we discussed severe immunocompromised state all right severe immunocompromised state such as all these conditions in hiv infection leukemia lymphoma generalized malignancy therapy with alkylating agents anti metabolites radiation or large doses of corticosteroids okay severe immunosuppression pregnancy all right then receipt of antibody containing blood products severe acute uh, severe acute illness or okay now administration we discussed all right now what are the reactions so what are the uh, reactions it can occur so there is a mild measles illness all right that is uh, five to 10 days average seven days we learned in the incubation period right for vaccine induced measles that incubation period is seven days immunity 11 to 12 days after vaccination and uh, probably it lasts for life lifelong and after the second vaccine it confers around 98 percentage protection all right now 95 percentage of uh, protection uh, one dose of vaccine at 11 to 12 months appears to give 95 percentage and with two doses there is 98 percentage protection all right now contacts contacts if uh, contacts over the age of 9 to 12 months measles vaccine should be given within 3 days of exposure all right now why because the incubation period is induced by the vaccine is about 7 days compared with 10 days for naturally acquired measles so we have to give the vaccine within 3 days of exposure now we said there can be a measles like illness that is due to the product that is due to the product it is a product related problem all right and it is of short duration fever rash comes and it is mild it lasts for 1 to 3 days but then there can be adverse effect of the vaccine that is toxic shock syndrome now this is not because of the product this is because of the immunization the people who are administering it like of the it is there is a problem of the immunization service so this is because if you use a vial that is contaminated an expired product or if you are using it after 4 hours we learn that with, within 4 hours of opening the vial the vaccine should be used so if it is used after that it will be a problem so the symptoms are typical severe watery diarrhea and so on high fever will be there right vomiting and this is within few hours and this is fatal it can the cause can cause death within 48 hours case fatality rates are high next is the immunoglobulin so immunoglobulin measles can be prevented by this all right uh, if it is given in the early uh, it has to be given yeah now this has to be given within 3 to 4 days of exposure all right so that is measles immunoglobulin all right what are the outbreak control measures so isolation within 7 days after the onset of rash immunization of the contacts within 2 days of exposure 
Now vaccine is contraindicated. If the vaccine is contraindicated, immuno immunoglobulin within three to four days of the exposure and prompt immunization at the beginning of an epidemic is essential to limit its spread. So eradication of measles is also, um, it is amenable just like smallpox. So uh, only two doses of the vaccine are needed and uh, thus we can achieve uh, its eradication. Alright, so thank you and that was all about measles.